My name is Professor Dial Jumaili. I am professor of artificial intelligence, my specialist in medical engineering. I work as professor at Liverpool John Moores University. Uh, my background in engineering and mathematics. I have chosen this area because I want to make a difference, especially on the development of technology or a development of system that intelligent enough to start getting involved in our life. Hi, my name is Ankit Shukla and I'm a senior data scientist at Upgrad. I have done my engineering from BIT Mesra and uh, I've been in the data science and ML space for about five and a half years now. Artificial intelligence has become something very important in our life. Start changing our life, start involving with our life, from law to entertainment, from medicine to finance, banking, as well as oil pricing, the prediction of oil prices, the prediction of the weather, all that involve artificial intelligence. And for the next five years, we will require more people understand AI. And AI is going to change our life for the better because things is going to be done more efficient, things is going to be done faster, and it's going to be cheaper. So for the next five years, we will be more jobs created because of artificial intelligence. Uh, the field is intellectually very rewarding and challenging. So if that's what you're looking for in a job, then uh, you should definitely go in it. If you're talking about the flux in the field, comparing uh, it to the fact that it's a pretty new career stream right now, uh, it's trust me, it's here to stay. Because ML right now is at a stage where it's making a difference around the world in every domain that you could possibly think of. So trust me, the field is here to stay. If you're looking at the financial aspect of it, there's a lot of demand and uh, now every product online or offline that you see, uh, machine learning is going to play a role there. So like financially, it's, it's very stable and the financial rewards are great provided how updated and skilled you are at the field. Artificial intelligence is going to be involved in our life, as I said early on. It's going to change the things we are doing. It's going to change the way we look at things. But skills require to do these things. And if you want to have a career in this area, you need to learn programming. You need to be good in logical thinking as well as good in doing statistics. So people have background in programming or engineering or mathematics or statistics, and they want to learn about artificial intelligence, then they have to get ready to learn other aspect of logical thinking, other aspect of engineering, and another aspect of data analysis to become AI experts or AI officers or AI developers. It depends on the area you are looking to be involved in. It is like any other system development. You have to learn about how to get the requirement specification of the system you want to develop. Then you build the design. Then after that, you have to develop the system. There are a lot of techniques and tools we have learned in the last 40 years of our life of putting the background and putting the basis of developing AI system, that means intelligent system. Well, the three most important thing uh, that a machine learning engineer should focus on, I'll talk about the technical aspect of it. I guess you should be, uh, you, have, you should have very strong CS fundamentals the computer science fundamentals, the data structures, the algorithms, system design, uh, you should be uh, quite uh, comfortable with that. The second I would say is uh, learn about machine learning and especially the applied aspect of it, learn how to implement it in uh, large scale scenarios. So maybe you should focus on that. And as a third step, you should be very comfortable handling the data because you'll have to write a lot of data pipelines and handle large quantities of data. So yeah, develop skill and be comfortable with that. As I mentioned earlier on, AI is going to be part of our life. Then all the professionals should start learning about AI. All the professionals start becoming aware of what's happening and aware of the development within their area. They should not be scared of that technology. They should not be scared from AI. AI, it is simple if you start thinking about it in terms of models, in terms of modular, in terms of object, if we call, in terms of how it's going to affect my specialist area. 
So if you are medical doctors, then the AI expert will never able to develop expert system or intelligent system to do diagnosing without the help of the medical doctors. Then we need these medical doctors. The same with finance, the same with accountant, the same with entertainment. So we have to, to use what we call an agile approach. Agile approach, we will make the expert in their, in their field, the doctors, the engineers, to be part of the development of this intelligence system. And I will have to encourage every professional to start learning about AI, at least learning the basic of AI, and how they are going to affect their future. Again, I would come up with a basic uh, three-point approach uh, that you should employ while designing any machine learning process in order to avoid the common pitfalls. So the first is you should ensure that the data quality is impeccable. Make sure that the pipeline that you have designed has features to kind of ensure good data quality. This includes like uh, counting for missing values or detecting outliers and removing them. And sometimes even the data uh, that you're expecting, if you're, suppose you're expecting numerical data and all of a sudden special characters start popping up, that breaks down the system. So make sure that these basic uh, uh, things are covered while you're uh, writing the data pipeline and the data quality is maintained always because what goes in uh, comes out of the system. So. Uh, that's one point. The second thing I would suggest is that uh, uh, the second thing that you need to take care of is the modeling process. Like you need to uh, make sure that the modeling process does not have any, any, any problems. Like the common problems that occur with the modeling process is like, oh, your model could be overfitting. There could be, uh, the model could be biased. Uh, there could be data leakage in the model that uh, normally happens when you're validating the model or sampling the training data. So make sure those kind of things are not happening. Uh, the third thing that I would uh, say that you should focus on is come up uh, with a correct performance metric. So when, you, when you're trying to uh, solve a problem, make sure that the perform, performance metric uh, that you're using to kind of evaluate your solution is something that is in alignment with your problem statement. So that is very important. An example of that could be uh, of a correct performance metric uh, could be suppose you are trying to uh, assess the quality of a social media post and the performance metric that you come up with is the number of likes that the post has got. So that's I would say is not really a good performance metric because usually what we see on social media, large accounts have a lot, lot of followers. So anything that they post uh, garners a lot of likes. So you need to kind of uh, come up with a performance metric that is solely based on the quality of the post. So in this case, perhaps a simple example could be the ratio of likes to the number of followers of that account. I will say the answer is going to be the machine will be working with us. The machine will be living with us. The servant will be a machine. The driver will be a machine cooker will be a machine and the cook will be a machine of course the cooker is a machine but the cook is going to be a machine and some some people will ask me say will this machine going to have feeling actually we are working on that we are working on the ethics of the machines of these machines imagine a car which is self-drive car which have AI and had an accident hit somebody on the road who is going to be sued who is going to be responsible? Is it going to be the machine or the person who developed this machine or the owner of this machine? All this question has no answers yet. This is why we do a lot of research on this area. But somebody will ask me, will say, will this machine going to be in dangerous? Actually, I'll say yes. It depends on the person who is going to create these machines. If the person who created the machine in his, his aim or her aim to create a machine that's going to be used for stealing or used to do bad things, then this machine is going to do bad things. And at the same time, if you are creating a machine to serve us, then that's different. This machine is going to serve us. Exactly what we have now at the moment with computers. We have we developed computers to do things for us. But at the same time, you see some viruses. There are people using viruses to try to attack some of our servers, some of our machines. But the more of these things happening, 
the more you develop machine that's going to be to protect you. So it's like having a thief and having a police or having somebody bad and somebody good. So all the time, the good machines will protect us from the bad machines. Well, <laughs> that is a discussion that we have been reading a lot about in all the big tech magazines and AI news newsletters that we subscribe to. But uh, I think the Terminator scenario is quite far-fetched. Al although the field is uh, changing at a rapid pace, so you can't really be sure of it. I think it's better to be cautious. Uh, but there's a lot of hype associated with AI, and we really need to understand how to uh, grab the reality and isolate the hype. So that is something that we need to focus on, and the media also needs to be responsible. Uh, a step that we could probably take in, in this uh, direction would be to try to democratize AI. That's what is happening, uh, and build a strong community uh, around it. How we can do it is by ensuring uh, proper communication, make, make, uh, make sure that the things and the facts are portrayed right and communicated to the entire uh, to the entire community to follow and gauge upon. So I guess the Terminator scenario is quite far-fetched. Uh, but yeah, AI has a lot of potential. And uh, it, it, we definitely need to be uh, cautious in how we use it. And we need to, be, uh, we need to use it responsibly. People, they say, they are worrying about our, the jobs in the future. More jobs are going to be created, actually, out of the AI rather than we are going to lose the jobs. Yes, there are some jobs going to be, going to be taken by the machines, but there are more jobs going to be created. They say 60% of the jobs which we have at the moment will be lost. However, more jobs going to be created out of the development of AI systems and the development of intelligent system, which will be involved in every part of our life. As I said earlier on, from entertainment to law, and from finance to transport. Well, my advice for beginners in the field of machine learning uh, engineering would be, uh, you should first focus on understanding the problem uh, completely, and especially focus on understanding the problem statement at hand. Uh, trust me, it's a very understa understated and underrated thing. Uh, like you read the problem statement and you start with your solution. Read again and again, make sure how you're going to structure the problem, what is the objective that we are trying to achieve. So that is one advice that I have for you. Uh, another would be to kind of focus on the fundamentals, the basics, the skills that are required to succeed in the field. And uh, the, the third advice again would be uh, to keep yourself updated of the latest happenings around the world because the field is very dynamic in nature. New technologies are coming up every second and every day. So if you are not abreast uh, with the field, there's a high chance that you might get obsolete uh, in the near future.